The goat rodeo must go on. The who what now? The goat rodeo. Oh, what's <laughs> what? What's that referring to? Everything we do every day, Paul. Everything. Oh. Everything. So I think of it as trying to catch chickens. Hurting cats. Yeah, like it's difficult, but like if you succeeded, what would would the point be? <laughs> you know, like it's just there's some kind of Zen thing there. I don't know. And that wraps it up for today, folks. I've enjoyed this episode of Goat Rodeo Cat Herding. Um, so it's basically a Microsoft hardware episode. There's two major things. One, uh, Microsoft announced this uh, new dining platter that actually rotates <laughs> yep. like a lazy Susan. Mm -hmm. But this is actually the Surface Hub 2S, which will set you back at nine grand. And for that, you'll get a 55-inch display, Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig M.2 drive, 4K plus display, and uh, he had to weigh about 60 pounds and cost you about nine grand. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, I noticed it has what looks like a USB-C plug on it, Brad. Is that uh -huh. Thunderbolt 3 compliant? I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. I don't... Well, you know, I, I keep I haven't written this up yet, but Microsoft and Intel, not so. <laughs> Uh, like thing. the little the little mammals that run around the feet of the dinosaurs, just as that meteor is careening toward the Yucatan Peninsula, ready to wipe out, well, dinosaurs, I guess. Yeah, it's typically. Um, <laughs> totally lost what I was going to track. The one interesting thing you can do is if you said, hey, I want to drag this thing out into the middle of a field and have a meeting, you can because there's actually a battery pack that you can buy along with a mobile stand for, for those who have said, yeah, I want more lithium ion in my office. Just... I, think my, I think my new campaign for 2019 is going to be to debunk the side hustle baloney and preach the notion of less work to people, right? Because if we get to the point where you need to attach a battery to this freaking thing so you guys can have a little meeting outside or whatever, here's an idea. Just leave the display in the building, you know? <laughs> The uh, the one interest well the battery is kind of interesting for the people that really want that, uh, but the other interesting <laughs> yes. thing too is because this is a compute module thing. One we've known about this for a while that this is swappable yep. hardware. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can buy this thing without it. You can just buy a monitor that attaches to the wall yeah. and supports patch patch patch. That's what we're gonna call it. Ton and ton. I can't talk touch and pen input if that's what you that's need. what you were trying to say touch yeah. and pen yeah but... and you said patch pen touch <laughs> yeah no i get it um how much will that little thing set you back we don't Eight know yet, thousand I mean, dollars <laughs> i mean if be... the whole thing costs nine grand the compute unit i bet you could probably fathom is maybe a, a grand maybe it's at le yeah at least uh, at least so i would say one to two thousand dollars yeah yes yeah. So then you've got the display that's left, which is going to be the most expensive part, and then you're going to be you're going to be. This spending... is what I'm looking for the the Surface Hub display. Mm -hmm. That's it. Not Hub, sorry, Surface um, Studio display. Yeah, I think that's coming next year. Well, three by two, might be next year. Yeah, and the other thing too is if you want this thing in a, an 85 inch variety, you now have that option. Well, not yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me qualify that. In June, you'll be able to buy the 50 inch variety. Yeah, yeah. Starting next year, you'll be able to buy an 85 inch variety if you really want. But interestingly enough, the 85 inch does not come in the same aspect ratio, right? The everything Surface uses what three by two, and the 85 inch will be 16 by nine. Yeah, I, I think the Surface Hub one. Units were not three by two. Correct. I think they were. I think they were sixteen by whatever. So, I think but, you know they have to stack them up, right? So the idea yeah. here is you can turn the smaller one vertically, and it should line up with the the height of the eighty five inch one, which I assume does not support spinning. We'll find out. I'd also yeah. think too an eighty five inch that is in three by two might be a little tall for some people. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you could step into it. Yeah, it <laughs> would know? be. A, it would basically you do be a, a door. Like a, yeah, a <laughs> video call with someone would be full sized, literally. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's an interesting device. The first generation sold really well. Um, and we'll, I, I expect that this one will sell really well. Granted, 9000 bucks isn't cheap, but for conference rooms and that kind of thing, 9000 bucks isn't really much money at all. There's nothing like this in the world. I, yeah. I think this product is incredible. I, you know, I, it's as an individual, it's not something I'm going to be buying, right. you know, nor will anyone else. But um, it's 
it serves a need and it's it's really cool yeah and so this apparatus right here is what i believe is coming to the next generation surface studio smaller form factor same type of thing yep. but um that is, this is kind of like the pioneering hardware if you will to mm -hmm. basically build modular computing because as we all know the display almost always outlasts the actual hardware in terms of what you need in life so yep yep that's a smart idea it is and so that's what happened in new york this morning um, last night in Seattle, I think that's where they filmed it. Uh, Microsoft launched a new expensive console that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> well, I, okay. So I meant to ask you about this, but well, first say what it is. Yeah. So Microsoft yesterday announced the Xbox one S all digital edition, and it'll mm -hmm. come with Minecraft Forza horizon three and uh, sea of thieves. It has no disk drive. You got to download all your bits for the smitten price of $249.99, which I don't think makes any sense. There's something Every time you talk here. about Microsoft hardware, I, stop, I start yawning. It's not on purpose. It's weird. It's offensive. I know. <laughs> I, I, I think I slept pretty well last night. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't make sense. Why would you... Okay, I, I well, don't... let's do the math of why it doesn't make sense. So a... Xbox One S mm -hmm. with a disk drive mm -hmm. costs what supposedly two ninety nine. Yeah, but if you pay if you pay two ninety nine for that, I will slap you exactly. around with a fish. You should never pay full price on any Xbox. Those things are always on sale. Yeah, I would say the normal price of that thing is usually about two fifty. But it's even less than that. If you go on oh, if you it? go on Amazon right now, right this minute for two hundred and thirty two dollars, you can buy an Xbox One S with a disk drive, mm -hmm. one terabyte of storage, get Battlefield Five and the Apex Legends Founders Pack, which is like thirty bucks, for two hundred and thirty two bucks. Okay. Yeah, but okay, so but Microsoft is describing the manufacturer's list price, right? And so this mm -hmm. thing will also be on sale a lot. Amazon will sell it for less, et cetera, yep. et cetera. So you know, we'll have to see what that looks like. I, I think this is a lot like the other thing that was announced yesterday, which is the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, mm -hmm. which combines Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass as a monthly subscription fee, $14.99. Now, the two components that make that thing up are purchasable in smaller, I'm sorry, in actually bigger time frames, right? And so if you go and buy a year of Xbox Game Pass, you'll save a lot of money. You essentially get two months for free, I think is how it works out. Um, so when you do the math on this, you know, $15 a month times 12, it, it, it's actually just about the same as paying for the other. It's actually exactly the same as paying for the two other things side by side if you if you paid for a year. Um, but, I mean, I think when this thing actually ships, what we're going to find is there will be different options. And, of course, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. will probably offer those prices. So the, the games that come with the Xbox One S all digital edition or whatever mm -hmm. it's called – are, you said Minecraft, um, Forza Horizon Sea of Thieves, 3. and yep. Four Horizon Three. Now, what is what's the value of those games added up? Really, I mean, we're talking it's under a hundred bucks, right? It's like well, it, it, it depends because it could be okay. a buck if you're subscribing to Game Pass. You just kind of get them, right? Oh, that's right. That's true. So it's it, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think what we're going to see is that uh, this console will fall into that same category. You should, you yep. are insane to buy this w without it being on sale. But, you know, I have a bigger question about this thing, which is, here we are, it's 2019. Mm -hmm. Why isn't there an Xbox One X yeah. all digital edition as well, right? I mean, in fact, you could make the argument that all of these things should be all digital and they should just sell a disk drive. Mm -hmm. You know? So if you actually want the disk, you know, it's whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah. Th there's... I understand why they don't want to abandon the disk drive, but it would not surprise me if what you just said is maybe their strategy for next gen. I still think that this device is like a canary in the coal mine, right? They're they're trying to introduce the idea of shipping a console without a disk drive. They, there's an edu there's an education factor they have to educate the market, and they don't want to have to do that education with the next generation hardware. So it'd be a lot. It's a lot easier for them now to ship an all digital version with the next yeah. stuff than it is now. And plus, I agree with everything you just said, I, but I, my issue here is the types of people mm -hmm. who would be all digital today would likely be choosing an Xbox One X, not an S. Yeah, right? you're not wrong. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I get it. I mean, the, the Xbox One S uh, was originally introduced probably, what, three and a half years ago, something like that. It was a cost-reduced version of the original Xbox One, but the, I think the special thing about it is it's way more attractive. Like, it's a beautiful device. In fact, mm -hmm. at the time... 
I wrote an article describing it as the perfect thing. You know, from a form yeah. factor perspective, it has that kind of elegant Apple-like look to it. It's, you know, perfect mm -hmm. is a tough word, but it's it's beautiful. Um, I'm surprised they didn't go a little thinner, like I guess less tall, right? Yeah. You know, because they don't have the disc drive in there. Um, but okay, whatever, it's fine. But you have to think that the prices of the components that they're using in this device are, are significantly less than they were two and a half years, three, whatever it was, three and a half years ago. Um, I don't understand why this thing doesn't cost like 200 bucks. Yeah, that, that's, you know? that's the whole point. Like if this would have... Yeah, come out. That would have made it very interesting. Right. And the thing is, is Microsoft is now on the on the wrong side of basically reactionary <laughs> to this yeah. because yeah. it's let's just say that everything does happen as we expect, that it actually does ship for much less than 249 bucks. Because Microsoft even said that this device will always be fifty dollars cheaper than the traditional Xbox One S. So Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Let's say that it does. Microsoft mm -hmm. just got railed across basically every publication for saying, why is this thing so expensive? And now they have to overcome that. Granted, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, and later this oh, year, they'll do big sales and they'll say, look, it's 50 bucks off or whatever. But the price. It, <laughs> Listen, yeah. here's, a, here's a bit of inside baseball that you will appreciate and immediately realize is true, which is that when this thing uh, does go on sale, right, inevitably, sometime probably between now, when does it launch in June or so or May? Uh, yeah, May 7th. May 7th. So uh, less than a month from now. When this thing goes on sale, I predict it will be on uh, – when it becomes available for sale, it will be available at a sale price within 30 days because they have Xbox sales all the time. And when that happens, you will see the following headline. The Xbox One All Digital Edition is already on sale. Mm -hmm. And you will be able to position that as a writer – not you, but I mean anyone who writes a blog post or whatever – as a defeat for Microsoft because, you know, it will basically be this self-fulfilling prophecy. See, they priced this thing too expensive. Now, from Microsoft's perspective, they probably always understood that this thing would be, because you just said that it will always be 50 bucks less. Well, the Xbox One S today, you said, is it on Amazon with a bunch of games with 232? Well, it should be on Amazon for 182. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that reaches into no-brainer territory. Right. But they should have gotten on top of that story. Like, they should have gotten in front of that there's something missing it, like this yeah. doesn't just drive <laughs> <laughs> technically correct yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. what well, yeah. well, we're gonna have to just see what they do with this but the narrative feels incomplete and not correct so we will uh yeah i mean this thing leaked all over the place too and i i, I just don't understand why this wasn't handled a little better i mean they, if they didn't see this coming and yeah. they've got serious problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yes. I, uh, right. Yeah, like, they, nobody, there's nobody, if everybody sat around the table and said, 249, that thing is going to sell off the shelf. And nobody pulled up Amazon in that meeting. Like that so, would yeah, have well, been. Uh, yeah, right. But what about this thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Because you know how normal people buy stuff? They go to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Or they walk into Best Buy and they grip, rip it right. off the shelf. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think Microsoft does understand this. I just think they bungled the communication part of it. You know, they should have highlighted the fact that this is a, a manufacturer list price. Prices are often lower. Xbox hardware is often on sale. Mm -hmm. And you will often see it for up to, you know, our, our goal is that this thing will always sell for $50 less than the normal version. You know. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, we will see. I don't know. I don't know. We will. We will see. I don't know. That's about all I got. I mean, that's two major, <laughs> two major Microsoft announcements. There's other things happening, but those are the two big ones that are uh, floating around in the neighborhood. I, I threw this by you and Mehdi yesterday privately, mm -hmm. but I mean, I've been kind of surprised by how big of a news week this week has been. You know, Apple and Qualcomm just settled. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Intel, it's like, not coincidentally, dropped out of the five G modem market. So here's a fun, here's a fun little story about that that I've heard very yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah is that Intel tried to, I think, pay Microsoft to put mm -hmm. their modems in their Surface LTE stuff, and Microsoft just said, nah. Like, Everything you need to know about Intel and mobile is that um, when <laughs> Apple did have the two suppliers, Intel and Qualcomm, for iPhone, I don't remember which gen it was, iPhone 8 or iPhone mm -hmm. 7, I don't remember, but um, <laughs> they had to slow down the Qualcomm modems 
to match the lower speed of the Intel modems so that every iPhone user would have a consistent experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, seriously. And I know, I mean, look, th this says a lot of things. I, I First of all, I, I never wrote this. I may still write it. I think it's still very relevant. But um, Qualcomm's uh, licensing of their patented technologies is actually very fair. Apple has always got a better price than anybody from them. Um, them trying to get an even lower price is just robbery. I mean, they're just a terrible company. Um, they were always in the wrong. And so when I see these two companies settle and Apple paying Qualcomm, by mm -hmm. the way, um, for for an ongoing license uh, for their intellectual property rights, I think that proves that. But, you know, when Intel drops out of the market, like literally the day of this announcement, this also tells me that the Intel guys were like, yeah, yeah, we'll have this, uh, we'll have it done by the end of 2019. Well, okay, actually, it'll probably be sometime in uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, uh, it will be 2021, but it won't be as – and they were – Apple was like, oh, I mean, my God, what have we gone into here? And, you know, unfortunately, um, for people who, I guess, are critics of Apple, um, this will only accentuate kind of a – I don't. I don't want to. It's 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 bad if you care about competition, but it's kind of good if you care about Apple. A key part of their strategy, which is to partner only when they have to, and to eliminate those partners by doing as much as possible in house. It's the reason they brought their processors in house. Uh, for example, um, there there is no doubt. Well, we know this. It's a fact. Uh, Intel or uh, uh, Apple is working on modem technology. As soon as they can get 5G modems that are anywhere close to what Qualcomm has, and that may take. Some every years, they're going to drop Qualcomm mm -hmm. like a bad habit. There's no doubt about it. Um, but but you know you have to make the case. Their experience with Intel kind of proves them right for that. Right? They can't mm -hmm. rely on anybody. You know. Um, so it's a tricky situation. It is. It yeah. is, and Qualcomm but, cl clearly you know, has the better product. Users, yeah, they do absolutely. So. Um, iPhone users are going to have great modems, <laughs> so you're going to be all set. If Apple wants to ship a 5G handset this fall, they will be able to. They won't. I bet. I guarantee. That. Uh, okay, but but now if they want to ship it in 2020, mm -hmm. it's a guarantee. It's a lock. Yep. If they don't ship one this year, it's because of Apple, right? Yeah. They 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 absolutely are on that slow boat upgrade kind of thing, and they can make a good argument um, that 5G is not prevalent enough to worry about mm -hmm. this year, but. You know, it, it has to remind you of that original iPhone launch where 3G was very prevalent and they launched with edge network support, which is like 2 something mm -hmm. G, you know, 2.5 G, whatever. Um, you hate to see that kind of thing, but. We yeah. will see. You know, they're not the, yeah, they won't do like a one off. Like, you know, like Samsung has like a oh, yeah. special version. They're never going to do that. No. <laughs> They'll never do that. Oh, nope. Actually, that's how you say that. Could be like the iPhone 10 though, you know, where there's like one model that's a little different. I guess they could. They could differentiate it where that whatever the bigger yeah, it would one have to be has. other stuff too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? We will find out. Well, not soon enough. I guess we got to wait until <laughs> we will September. find out eventually. Eventually. Yeah, we'll find out by the time that the 82 inch Surface Pro Surface Pub 2s is shipping. I bet that's one we'll know. Yeah, the uh, the lazy Susan right here. Mm-hmm. That's good. Dim sung. <laughs>